Boom. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day 23 of the Dr. V 2024 challenge. Uh, good morning from Sedona, Arizona. I'm at the Enchantment Resort uh, right outside Sedona in the canyon. I don't know how good this Wi-Fi is, so uh, it might be a short one. I also have to go to my mastermind, which starts here in an hour and I still need to shower and stuff. So uh, hello from lovely Sedona. Comment if you've ever been to Sedona, Sedona, Arizona. Sedona, Arizona. There's actually a, a really good song called Sedona that I really like. Can y'all hear me okay? Hope everything's good. I don't know how good this Wi-Fi is, so we'll we shall see. It will be a short one for reals this time. I am not going 45 minutes, I promise. Good morning, Patty Eckert. Uh, good morning, Carrie, Rose, Galen, and Nita Louise. Welcome to Replay. If you're watching on the replay, you can fast forward to the one uh, five-minute mark when I usually get started. Uh, in the meantime, we'll say hello to Clout Gangsta watching on YouTube. Um, hit the share screen. The share screen. <laughs> share button. Lori Bloom. All of y'all, I appreciate it when y'all do that, by the way. I don't say that enough. Ferdy. Good morning. Welcome back, everybody. This is so awesome to see these regular um, names coming back, you know? Yeah. Sedona's awesome. I'm in your backyard, Gina G. Sarah Elizabeth, have you guys been to Sedona? I'm in my hacienda, in my mastermind. The group put me up in, a, in the hacienda because I'm one of the original founding members of this mastermind. And um, so I just... I guess I'll show you around real quick while we wait. So here's the key fireplace and the ceilings are super tall. So I think these are like 20 feet ceilings and you can see the red rock background behind me. And then we got this little, this huge living room set up and through that door right there is the master suite, which is ginormous. There are two Murphy beds. There's one, Here's the one I sleeping, I'm sleeping on. I'm gonna have two roommates. There's a kitchen back there with a dining room and a full kitchen. And the bathroom uh, here is just trust, take my word for it, it's ginormous. But I thought you might like the fireplace because for most of us watching, it's winter time. All right, um, good morning. Okay, we got about two more minutes to go. Uh, have you been to Sedona? Who likes it? Who doesn't like it? I highly recommend it. Um, I think it's more interesting than the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, if you see it one time, it's good. But you can go to the Grand Canyon. or Actually, you could go in Phoenix, drive up to Sedona, drive up to Flagstaff, which is an amazing college town, drive up to uh, Grand Canyon, drive to Las Vegas, and that'd be a, a cool road trip. I did that road trip. All right, nice. Thank you, Melissa Porter, Ruth Camille, Ruth McCool. Good morning, Keila G. Good morning, everybody. Kay Martinez, never been there. Got put it on your list. All right. How is the uh, connection, by the way? I don't know how good this Wi Fi is going to be. <clears throat> I'm in the middle of a canyon, and Red Rock Canyon is beautiful. <clears throat> I think it's called Boynton, Boynton Canyon. I could be wrong, but. It's gorgeous. Let's see which way should I lean? Lean this way so y'all can see the fireplace. Uh, Shane, sweet. Awesome. So we'll see how this Wi-Fi holds up. <clears throat> There's body cell service, um, but we have Wi-Fi and hopefully it'll be okay. Paula loves it. Don't get cold there. Um, no, it's not. It's, I think, going to be 50s for the high and 30s for the low. So cold right now, but it's rainy. No snow. <clears throat> Tess. All right, let's just get started because I got to keep this short. Um, I got to go get dressed uh, and get to my mastermind. Number one, do you know what a mastermind is? Question number one, do you know what a mastermind is? Put uh, yes, mastermind, no mastermind. Like, do you have one? Do you belong to one? Uh, number one, do you know? I know Tess does. Okay. Do you know what a mastermind is? And this this will lead to um, what we've been talking about yesterday. You know, do more of what you love. Do and today is do less of what you tolerate. And tomorrow will be do none 
of what you hate. <clears throat> so this is interesting. So a lot of no's, no to Melissa Porter, no to Nora Thomason. <laughs> Tess is laughing because she knows. Uh, Groot, no, I'm in a mastermind. Yep. Yes, I have a master of my, my in my mind. No, <laughs> I don't know what that means. No, yes, no, no mastermind. Watch a master on YouTube. No, thank you, Puda, but no. Do you know what a mastermind is? So the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up is because it's one of the key principles to becoming successful. Yesterday, we talked about Think and Grow Rich, or the other day, the book Think and Grow Rich um, by Napoleon Hill and... Um, my mentor, Greg Reed, who's the modern day Napoleon Hill. Uh, one of the key principles to being successful is to belong to a mastermind. A mastermind is uh, two or more persons who get together um, with the sole mission of, of accomplishing uh, an idea or something like that. So this is a breakthrough mastermind with Scott Duffy. It's, I would say it's my main mastermind. Um, we meet three times a year at different locations. And this mastermind is based on experiences and we learn stuff. This is where um, our first, our first ever where I'm a founding member was the New York Yankees experience. We got to go to New York city. We got to uh, go into the New York Yankees war room, which was um, uh, awesome. And uh, Brian Cashman, who's the general manager of the New York Yankees, spoke to us in the war room, which was a little bit bigger than this room here. It was full of TV screens. And on the TV screens, it had, oh, no, we couldn't take pictures, obviously, no cameras, nothing like that. Um, it had ton of TV screens that, had, that was playing every baseball game all over the world in every league. And underneath that, it had monitors that had um, stats that was following stats and graphing stats of what was happening. It was pretty crazy. And he was supposed to give us 10 minutes, turned into 30 minutes. Um, not, not, uh, not, not quite a peer group something a little bit more intense than a peer group. And, um, and then we got a suite at the mastermind at the Yankees game. I mean, it was just really awesome. My second, the second experience we went to was um, in San Diego, Coronado Island. We got to train with the Navy SEALs and we got to see um, to tour where they where the, the training facility where they literally do the muster and all that stuff, sort of stuff. And they literally ring the bell and put down their helmet, and all that stuff, you know? And, um, that was really, really cool. And, um, that's where I got to jump out of a helicopter into the Pacific ocean. And then, you know, uh, get pulled out into the, uh, uh, a boat. And then we did beach exercises. It was really cool training with the Navy SEALs and realized like there's a whole nother level of crazy that I, it was, it was pretty crazy. They didn't kill us, but man, I was tired. I was exhausted that, that night. And we've had other experiences, which like I've said, I got to go um, into the Lakers locker room and sat in LeBron James's locker room chair, his seat. And um, which before him, it was Kobe Bryant's chair. So when LeBron James went to LA, he uh, is the same reason why he picked you know the number twenty three. He wanted to be like Michael Jordan, and so when he went to LA, he wanted the best. So he wanted Kobe's old locker, um, and so I got to sit in his chair. Um, that's the sort of stuff we do, but that most masterminds are not like that. Most masterminds are you kind of sit around and talk about what you're working on. It's just, this is a very different mastermind and I love it. And that's what I'm doing here in Sedona. We're apparently supposed to, you know, we don't know exactly what the experience is, but <clears throat> because I'm a founding member, I, I get a little bit of insight. So I, I know at some point we're taking a, a two hour train ride somewhere to do something. 
and then two-hour train ride back. I think that's going to be pretty crazy. Uh, I know we're going to go do a vortex hike. So Sedona is a center, is a vortex center for energies. So yesterday, I, um, uh, if you remember, uh, Erica was gone. And, you know, I, I live in Houston. Erica went back to New Mexico to do this thing to get um, Milani baptized. Oh, by the way, that's so hilarious. Milani, I got her on video yesterday. She was crying and she was waking up and I was doing a Facebook Live and I walked into a room and she looked up at me and she goes, Dada. And it was like, what? I got it on camera. And Erica's like, no, no. I was like, yep. And then uh, later that morning, Erica was holding her. I turned around the corner and Milani saw me and she looks at me and she goes, dad, dad. And I said, you cannot deny that. Dad is her first word. She looked at me. She saw me. She looked right at me and said, dad, she was not just making noise. So. I'm I'm dropping the gravel the gavel on that one. Like I declared Dada was her first word. Which kind of upsets Erica because she she does most of the mothering. <clears throat> anyway, so Erica was gone from Thursday to Sunday. I I picked her from the airport Sunday evening and then I had half a day with her yesterday before I went for the airport and I thought about not going. I was like, man, I don't want to leave her alone with both kids for because I won't be back home until Friday night because Sedona is two and a half hours outside of Phoenix. So I have to give myself time to drive back to the airport. Then um, I have to uh, drive back to the airport, then uh, get on the plane and I lose an hour. And so I'm not going to get home till like Friday evening at like 7 p.m. or something like that. And that was a lot of time. And so I was just like, uh, like I was so sad, you know, none of us are average. It's awesome. <clears throat> well, M Mason said mama was her first word. Mason was a mama and her second word was not data, but was chicken. I lost to chicken. You know how hard it is for like a little kid to say chicken. That was her second word. And then her third word was data. I think I am too, right? Oh, no, wait, I missed it. I don't think I went. <clears throat> so I think his his uh, original one was, uh, or the first one was at his house, right? Chris Noggle's house. <clears throat> it's more than networking. That's part of it, though. But it's more than, it's more than networking. So... I, I was like, man, I don't want, I might not go. I, I should cancel. And Erica actually looked at me and says, no, you need to go. I said, are you going to be okay? She goes, you need to go. Because every time you go, you always come back with a nugget. And yesterday morning when I was um, getting dressed and I did the lives for y'all, I had a great live in my, in my private group. I thought yeah, yesterday's live about do more of what you love was amazing. Comment if you liked yesterday's live. And, <clears throat> and I was like uh, on a really good high and I manifested another $50,000 and I was getting work done, you know, another 50,000 for the bed and breakfast. And, um, and Erica goes, you feel you look like you're feeling pretty good. I was like, no, my energies are good. I feel really good. I said, but I don't want to leave you and the babies alone. She goes, no, you need to go. So I almost stopped. I almost didn't come yesterday. And um, uh, good. And um, and I started thinking. I was like, you do more of what you love. I love my mastermind group and most of my friends are from this group or from a different mastermind. I don't hang out with doctors. I don't really hang out with parents from the other, from school, from the other kids. We have a few friends that we've become friendlier to, but it's never quite worked out. We go to a few of their kids' uh, birthday parties and stuff. For example, Mason has a classmate that lives literally 
behind us on the other block. Like we can walk to their house and, um, we've been there to trick or treat and we've been, went there for the, the girl's birthday party. <clears throat> and then they came, um, to my birthday party. I just had some people come. Uh, we had, uh, some people go out to dinner for my birthday party outside with the kids and stuff at this park. They came to that. But other than that, like, we're just not that friendly. I don't know why. So it's so weird. Like I live in the middle of Houston in Bel Air and surrounded by people, but it's not like when I was a little kid, you know, like you don't ride around on your bicycles and you don't, I don't know. The kids don't really play with each other. You know, is it, is it me or is it just the times that we live in, you know? And, um, so that's why we're moving to B and B. Right. So to do more of what you love. I love my mastermind. And I got here last night after a little bit of a harrowing, harrowing drive in the rain. And it was just, I'm, I'm back around my peeps. And I already met new people. Some people that I that had been in the mastermind that I hadn't seen before. Some new people that are what we call previewers. This is their first time. And you're already starting to get to know other people and bonding. So do more of what you love. Now, if you've never met me in person, um, I mean, I'm I'm exactly what you see on a live. Like, I like the whole joke about, hey, say you'll come if you come to my bed and breakfast. And I had a bunch of you guys going, I'm coming, I'm coming. And I'm <laughs> like, I am just that goofy. I really am goofy. I really would, if I had to sell dildos for a living, I would be the best dildo seller ever. <laughs> But I'm not. So, um, so that is beautiful, right? It's, it's crazy. And, but when I'm not around people, I'm just really, I'm really quiet. I don't really say much. I'm really introspective. And I like that. I like to sit and meditate. And I like to, uh, be retrospective and introspective and think about my life. I like to manifest money. I like to make other people laugh. I like to be a little bit racy. I've always been a little bit, mm, he's a little too controversial, that Dr. V. You know, that was a problem. I got in trouble during residency for saying some shit. You know, like um, I had a, we were making rounds once and I was a third year med student. And I said something, uh, I said something like, um, that could have been like, uh, perceived as racist. You know, I said something about being a refugee and my attending later that day pulled me to the side and said, um, doc, I just, I think you're great. You know, you're, you're obviously very smart and you know, he's buttering me up. Right. And he says, but sometimes. You just say things that I think, I, I don't think you mean anything bad by it, but I think people misinterpret. And I'm like, like what? Like, it didn't even occur to me. He said, like, like uh, yesterday when you said that thing about being a refugee, I said, but I was, <laughs> and he, he goes, yeah, I know, but it was a uh, kind of an odd timing or a moment or <laughs> some people just don't know how to take it. I would just be careful i just be cautious and, and i was like okay and thank you pula and so i'm just kind of like okay you just ain't my people i guess so i have to be careful oh really nancy i didn't know that i would have like rented it that's awesome next time i come to sedona i will i will tell you i go uh well we'll rent it out i thought it was funny and that was what happened at the last mastermind in Dallas. Now I, I wasn't going live, uh, but last September we had a master, our experience was in Dallas and we got behind the scenes tours of the Dallas stadium. I grew up a Cowboys fan. I'd never been to Cowboys game. And so I was like, I'm coming to that one. I got to sit in, we got to go into Jerry Jones's suite, which was sweet. And I got to sit in his chair. Whenever you watch a Cowboys game, sometime during the game, usually towards the end, they show Jerry Jones sitting in his booth, looking down at the at the players. He has a private elevator 
that literally he pulls up his car in the basement. There's a whole huge VIP uh, parking underground where you literally just pull your car up. There are all of these Bentleys and Ferraris and stuff. You pull up and the uh, valet takes your car and you get escorted out to your suite or whatever. Well, Jerry Jones has where he pulls up, literally they take him out and they escort him to the, his private elevator that takes him straight up to that suite where you see him sitting. I got to sit in that chair. So um, that's stuff like that. So do more of what you love. I love to make people laugh. I like to cook for people. So today is do less of what you tolerate. Let me write that down in case we forget. So do to do us. And this is the big takeaway. If you don't remember anything from today's talk, I want you to pay attention to this part right here. Do less of what you tolerate. This is the definition of average. And remember the whole premise of these lives is that you've agreed not to be average. You've agreed average American is overweight. Average American lives paycheck to paycheck. Average American cannot handle a $500 um, ding. Average American makes $50,000. Poverty levels $20,000. That's average. 60% of Americans uh, is the divorce rate. 80% of Americans are disengaged with their jobs. They don't really love their jobs. That cashier is not really excited to see you. Trust me, at Walmart. That's why they like they do not move their asses. I'd rather do a self-checkout at Walmart, right? This is the definition of average. Is that they do what they tolerate. Average people tolerate. Write this down. Average people tolerate being 40 pounds overweight. Ah, I'll start the diet on Monday. I'll start the diet after the holidays. I'll start the diet later. Let me get past this project. I deserve these cookies. It's, it's my favorite. I don't see my cousin that often. We got to go out, that sort of stuff. They tolerate, average people tolerate 40 pounds of obesity. They tolerate paycheck to paycheck. Write this down. They they do just enough. They do just enough to not get fired. But yet they hate their jobs. They're not engaged. They're not super excited to go to work. Hence, and I'll prove it to you. Oh, my God. It's Monday. What happened to the weekend? Oh, my God. Sunday evening. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Tomorrow is Monday. It's Weekend's already over. If you loved your job, then Mondays would be amazing. Yay, I get to go back to my job. But that's not what average people say. Average people sit there and go, oh, my God, it's Monday. I can't believe it. What happened to the weekend? Oh, hump day. I just got to get past Wednesday. Hump day. Thursday is like, is Friday Eve. Oh, might as well go to the bar, have a couple of drinks, and then Friday, yay, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, Friday. These are all things that average people say. Now, have you ever thought about why do they say these things? Why do they say TGIF? And they say they're religious. They say, you know, Christ saves them and, and the blah, blah of this world, right? And that's what you thank God for? You thank God for Fridays? Think about this. We are the only creatures in God's green earth. Because your God created everything, right? God created everything. We are the only creatures in God's green earth that has a fucking notion of what Friday is. No other animals, no other creatures knows the difference between Sunday or Saturday or Wednesday. They have no clue. It's only us that say stupid shit like Friday and oh my God, hump day. Oh my God, holiday. Oh my God, vacation. No other animal goes, oh, I can't wait for my vacation. And then has a vacation. It says, how was your vacation? Oh my God, I'm so tired. I need a vacation for my vacation. That's what, that is the definition 
of average. They do, they tolerate, they do what they tolerate. They love their family, but eh, they're not so engaged. Uh, they've been married 20 years, but there's really no passion. I mean, they're kind of happy to go on a girl's trip, leave their spouses behind or wives behind. They, they love Sunday football. It's, in America, it's called, uh, what's it called? A football widow, something like that, where on Sundays, like you can't mess with them. Sunday, it's all about his football. He's, he's out with the boys. He's down in his man cave. If you love your family, why wouldn't you want them to be a part of it? Right? Why do you need this? Oh, he, it reminds me of Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal is going on his fishing trip. And my girl Anne Hathaway has no idea that he's making out with Heath Ledger. <laughs> Brokeback Mountain. See? Exactly. So... <laughs> So all, all of you wives who are sitting there going, oh, he's going on a fishing trip with the boys. <laughs> he's going on a hunting trip. Okay, I'm just telling you. I am just telling you. So um, this is the definition of average. In fact, <clears throat> Jim Rohn says this, number three. Dr. V, like, how do I not do this? All right. Jim Rohn says, look at what average people do and don't do it. Look at what average people do and don't do it. Average people, you know, care more about football than they do about their bank accounts. They care more about their team, baseball team, their fantasy, fucking fantasy baseball league than they do about their their kids' report card. They, um, they care more about having the nicest or newest iPhones or new, <laughs> I have a new iPhone, the new, newest cars. You know, they buy, it's like saying that you buy stuff to impress people you don't even like. And they don't even care. They could care less that you bought this new Lincoln or new Corvette or whatever. They don't care. Why don't they care? They're not thinking about you. Why are they not thinking about you? They're thinking about their own goddamn bills and debt and credit card payments. And, you know, their kids being bullied. You know, we always hear about the kids being bullied. What about the bullies? What, are, are there? Do parents not go on Facebook and be like, yo, my kid's the bully. So proud of my kid or I need help. My kid, you know, there are my kids being bullied. What about the other parents? Like, I need help. My kid's the bully. What do I do? <laughs> See what average people are doing and don't do it. They go on vacations they can't afford. I'll give you one. Well, we were talking about this the other day. Drive, actually, last night, driving up from Sedona. I was like, how do average people afford Disneyland? Like, I took Erica, Mason was two, and took Kizzy. And for the four of us, and we stayed, Erica booked the, uh, it was a motel. I was like, don't ever do that again. And because um, it came with, like, discounted tickets or whatever. It was, like, six grand, you know? So it was like $6,000. And I was like, how do average people do this? And I didn't even like it. It was June. Don't ever go to Disney, Disney World, Disneyland, which, which is the one in Orlando. It was freaking hot. And I was just walking around, looking at all these people, spending $20 on crappy chicken fingers. And the people were not that excited to be there, to work there. And it was so dumb. You're not missing out on anything. Trust me on this. It's really like, I was like, okay, we've done it. And now we're going again this summer. I'm like, what? Uh, it, was, it was so not cool. So there, I'll give you another one. 
average people collect Beanie Babies. <laughs> I got news for you. Your Beanie Baby collection is not going anywhere. It is still two bucks, if three bucks. How do I know? You just go uh, to an estate sale. Erica loves to do estates. When I first met Erica and we started dating and stuff, like her family would love to go to estate sales. And especially on Sundays and things were half price. They would argue over stuff. I'm like, what are y'all doing? And then I went to estate sales and I was like, oh, I get it. This is kind of exciting. You kind of like take your name and you can get like, you know, your shopping addiction done. And then one time I was walking around and I was telling Erica, I was like, look around. And uh, she said, what? I said, look at all of this shit. You know, like broken pottery, old plants, everything. Vases, lamps, you know, dishes, silverware. Now, now that I know, the only thing that's really valuable is like the Le Creuset pots. If you can find a Le Creuset pot or mid-century modern furniture. But even so, like not even knockoff furniture. Like don't even buy knockoff furniture. China cabinets, do not waste any money on China cabinets. That's what average people do. They fight over China cabinet. So average people <clears throat> hold on to stuff because they say, like, oh, I'm going to give this to my grandkids. I, I got news for you. Your grandkids don't want that brown furniture. <laughs> they don't want it. Average people put a bunch of junk in their garages and park their $40,000 cars out in the driveway in the rain. It's crazy to me. So back to Erica and I. I said, look around. She goes, what? I said, what do you see? There are toy doll collections, beanie baby collections, baseball card collections, little miniature car collections. There's train collections. There's all of the shit, right? There's sewing equipment. There's cloth material. I mean, it's a bunch of junk. And, and she said, she said, I see a bunch of stuff. Man, this person was a hoarder, yada, yada, yada. And I said, no, <clears throat> this is their life. Whoever died, grandma, whatever the situation was, like everything in this house is like their life. Their life is a clusterfuck. Write this down. <clears throat> okay, number four. You guys are waiting to see what I type. Comment if you have you, it might be you, if you have a mother and a grandmother that just hoard a bunch of stuff. They won't let go of anything. They have old newspapers. My favorite is the National Geographics. Do you have a friend or family member that has like a stack of National Geographics from like the 80s or 90s? Are they going to be like worth something? In fact, this is kind of funny. During the pandemic when everything was shut down, this guy was selling uh, like a collection, like 50 magazines of uh, Playboys. And, and and I was like, just I was just curious. So I clicked, I'm just curious. I clicked on the pictures and I'm looking for any covers. And it's all shit. Like none of them. And I, and I said, hey, by chance, do you have the Marilyn Monroe? And he was like, dude, if I had Marilyn Monroe, I wouldn't be sell, I wouldn't sell it. The only Playboy that's worth anything. And some people don't know this, but Marilyn Monroe was the first cover model for Playboy. Right? It's me. I am the problem. The Beanie Babies are not worth anything. Just give them away. And so that's right. So write this down. This one is really important. Yes. Hold on. Someone's knocking at the door. Your external environment is a reflection of your internal environment. Right? Oh, come in. Hi. Um, I'm just doing a little live real quick.
Okay. So when you have, when your mother, your grandmother is um, hoarding or you're hoarding, somebody said me, that's me. I'm having that problem right now. It's a reflection of what's happening inside your mind, right? It's a reflection of uh, the confusion inside your mind. You can't let go. You can't, you're holding on to the past. You're holding on to your childhood. You're holding on to the memory of your grandmother or whatever the scar is, right? Um, oh, this is a good one. Like children's clothes and stuff like that, or their, their drawings or what do you do with all that sort of stuff? It is your internal part that's important. And what, what average people don't understand is they justify like, oh no, these beanie babies are going to be worth something. Oh no, this railroad train collection is going to be worth something. Oh, this is, you know, and it's just not true. It's so mass produced. I mean, think, just, just go to Walmart and look at all that stuff. And then you go, this is only one Walmart in my little town. And I live in Houston. There's lots of Walmarts. And you start thinking about Walmarts and all the different towns and all these shelves filled with all this plastic stuff, all this knockoff furniture. And then that's just Walmart. There's Kmart and well, it used to be Kmart. See, it used to be Sears, Target. There's Bed Bath and Beyond. There's like, and you go, where is all this shit going? Where does that go? It goes into storage units. It goes into the garages because people can't let go. Now you guys are laughing because this is coming from the guy with 10, who owns 10 cars, but it's just this understanding. Does this make sense at all? We've become this nation, this world of average, of this messed up internal environment. So when you have a friend or a loved one who's having trouble, in fact, if you watch that TV show Hoarders, you, I mean, that's the big thing. That's, that's why it's so disgusting. You know, there was that one Hoarders episode where that lady had like a bunch of dead cats in her house. And she knew they were dead. So she put them in like the freezer because she couldn't stand to let them go to let, to bury them or whatever. Like, and they would get through, like they would, as they were cleaning up the hoarding mess, they would find dead cats, more dead cat bodies. It was, and so it's this reflection of this trauma y'all, but that's what being average means that's what being average means it means you are going you are tolerating you are tolerating the verbal abuse you are tolerating the paycheck to paycheck you are tolerating this feeling that you're you're going to be inadequate if you don't have stuff to show off to people i don't give a fuck like i don't care what you think of me i don't care what you think of my stupid cars and some of them are really dumb. Some like I bought a bunch of clunkers because I didn't know what I was doing. I don't care what you think about my sweater, which is awesome, by the way. You know, I don't care what you think about paying for my this mastermind, this whatever. I don't care. And I just I tell Eric, I'm like, dude, we're gonna move to this Pecos B and B. Like, you you, you got to get a garage sale going. I'll, ha I'll have movers. And I'm uh, we went through the phase where Mason, you know, she's, she creates a lot of crafts. Now she draws a lot of stuff. She does a lot of cute little projects. And at first we were putting them in the closet and, and, and cabinets and stuff. And last week I looked at her, I said, Hey Mason, this is a really cool thing. Um, but what do you think if we kind of throw it away? Because you know, are you done with it? She's like, yeah, I'm done with it. I said, what do you think if I throw it away? She goes, okay, go ahead. She doesn't care. It was me. That was the one who felt like I couldn't let it go. Like I had to hoard, I had to keep it. Now there's a couple of things where like she drew this really pretty picture that was like a different state of like, wow, she gotten really good. But for the most part, like, no. 
And then she, the other day, she made these little swords. She cut some cardboard and she wrapped some tape. And she's like, "Hey, swords, let's have a little sword fight." And they sat around on the counter for, you know, a couple days. And I said yesterday before I before Erica came home, I was like, "Hey, Mason, what do you think if we throw away these little swords?" She goes, "Okay." She doesn't care. She doesn't care. It's us. It's us that's me messed up. It's us that was the poor little Asian immigrant. It's us that you know still think that we're not good at math, or not smart enough, or not brave enough, or not entrepreneurial enough, or not cute enough, or not outgoing enough. I mean, how long are you going to keep holding on to? I'm an introvert. I'm an extrovert. How? Like, why? Why? Why that? Why? Why can't? I mean, if it's true that you're created in the image of your God, then why would you ever limit yourself to labels? Right. That's what average people do. They will tolerate uh, a dirty car. They will tolerate Motel 6. Don't ever fucking book me another motel again. <laughs> like, I will not tolerate this. You know, uh, they tolerate Olive Garden. They tolerate McDonald's. Think about that for a second. You know Chicken McNuggets are made with pink slime. That they're not even... Um, real meat. You know that Big Macs have a filler that is cellulose. It's the same thing in a Big Mac meat patty. It's not even a meat patty. It is the same stuff that they use to make um, uh, walls, walls with, dry uh, sheetrock with. It's the same stuff. Mold will not eat it. Yeah, we will eat it. And then you ask someone, why do you go to McDonald's? Tell me in the comment section, why do people go to McDonald's? And they will say, it's easy. It's convenient. I know what I'm getting, right? It's affordable. And then every now and then they'll say, it tastes good. It tastes good. Usually last. They never start off with it tastes good, right? Usually it's quick and easy. My kids were fussy. Uh, we were out all day with a football game or soccer game. They're hungry. They like it. They cry. They pout, right? But rarely do they say, oh, my God, it tastes delicious. What average people are doing is they're tolerating that. Dude, I will not stop at a McDonald's. I don't know. There's this thing where, like, you take a... You take their ice cream shake and like it doesn't melt. You can put it in the sun and it won't melt. Like, how is that? Right? It's crazy. And then you do all of these justifications for it. Oh, this is all they pay. Oh, I just got to get home. Oh, I just yada, yada, yada. Right? So you got to not do that. You got to look at your life. Okay, so I want you to write in the comment section, and then we're done because I've got to go. I'm, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late for my mastermind. Put in the comment section really quickly what are you doing that you're tolerating? You're tolerating. What are you really tolerating? If you had to be honest, what are you tolerating? It could be a marriage. It could be an abusive manager. It could be drama from a coworker. It could be uh, I'm tolerating my little apartment. I'm tolerating living where I don't want to live. I'm tolerating my car, my car that keeps breaking down, that keeps discharging the battery, that doesn't start. What are you tolerating? <clears throat> Putting up with average men, tolerating a life. Uh, I don't know how you tolerate your past. I don't know if you're going to be able to do much about that. What are you really tolerating? Here's a good one. House repairs. Can't write it down. You're tolerating your, your weight. Are you clutter in your house and your mind? People I live with, you know, this is horrible, Cher. You should never do that. Limiting yourself, 
Like, there's a lot of easy ones. Um, I will tell you, some of this is going to ring true for some. You are tolerating how people are treating you. You're tolerating how, how your kids are speaking to you. You're tolerating disrespect. You're tolerating, like, just enough. You're tolerating $100 in your bank account. You're tolerating, like, sweating the bills. You're tolerating it. You're tolerating the paycheck they give you, right? You're tolerating the junk in your garage, and you can't park your car in the garage because your mother, because five years ago, you told your mom that you, you, you would store her furniture until she got settled down, and it's been five years. See? Family drama. You're tolerating all that. So do less of what you tolerate. You know what? Every time I hang around you, sister, I love you, but there's a lot of drama that comes around you. I, I'm not available for dinner. Right? I'm not going out with y'all to the casino. I'm not going out to dueling piano. <clears throat> I, like, I'm, not, I'm not tolerating these relationships anymore. All right, I got to run. Oh, my God. It's going to take me 10 minutes to get down there. It starts in 10 minutes. I thought I said it was going to be a short one. It's not day 23. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about do none of what you hate. Love you all very much. Have an amazing day. Bye, guys.